Hey there everybody, this video will cover a quick review for every truck in the base game for SnowRunner working through in category order with labeled chapters so you can easily navigate around. So whether you're a newbie player or a veteran trucker, sit back, relax and enjoy. So starting off with the Scout class, we have the Chevrolet CK1500, the starting vehicle and a solid scouting workhorse for a long, long time. It improves with the upgrades you collect for it and is able to haul a good amount of spare fuel and repair parts once you have gained a few ranks. Even later into the game you can still rely on this little truck even in a moor. However, avoid towing trailers with this. The truck's relative low ground clearance can be an issue for towing. Next we have the Don 71 which is a funny little rock crawler if you take your time. Despite its tiny profile, you can get some relatively beefy mud tires on it up to 35 inches in diameter. However, like the Chevy CK1500, you will want to avoid towing trailers with this Scout. The roof rack can make the top a little heavy, but with autonomous winch fitted, you'll be driving along for days and days recovering where necessary with only a low fuel consumption level, though with all-wheel drive on a toggle, that will cost you. On to the Hummer H2. Now I have never really been a big fan of the Hummer in SnowRunner or in general. I find it a bit dull and in the game it's very quiet, it barely just rumbles along. Definitely a scout that suits the freeway gearbox but does struggle a bit in mud and snow because it lacks ground clearance, even with the suspension lift kit installed. It can perform okay at towing scout trailers but definitely don't rely on it. It can, however, haul a good number of spares across two combined add-ons for assisting other trucks and scouts. Next is the International Lordstar 1700, and do not sleep on this thing. Not only is it only one of two scouts that can have a small crane add-on to aid in rescues and cargo loading, but it also has a ton of power, plus all-wheel drive and diff lock always on, so once you get it into the high range, just watch it fly. Definitely suited to several roles if you swap the frame add-ons to your requirements, but out of the box, this is one of the best performing scouts you can get. Capable of hauling and loading its own trailer for cargo recovery missions, this truck will earn its keep in no time, plus it has a sick paint job. Moving on to the legend that is the Khan Loaf, it may be lacking in power, but it is hella fun to drive. Not particularly quick and top heavy with its roof rack, so I don't know that anybody that doesn't truly enjoy in driving this just a little bit. The fact that this comes with all-wheel drive and diff lock always on is always a win as well. A bit of a meme truck, but to be honest, it can save you in a bit of a pinch with some much needed repairs and supplies. The Scout 800 is practically a toy truck compared to everything else because it's so small in this game. It'll probably be your second Scout unless you have the DLC, but definitely give it a try though. I think it's a bit of a love-hate relationship with this thing. You'll want the higher suspension ride for the ground clearance, but then you'll be fighting being top heavy and risk rolling over a lot when you've got the roof rack installed. Not super powerful, so you won't be expecting this thing to tow or save another vehicle, that's for sure. Up next is the Tuz 166, which is another tiny scout with the ability to fit huge mud tires. Very old school in its workings, but the combination of all-wheel drive and diff lock always on, coupled with its Amore engine buff, can turn this thing into a demon. Like all of the small scouts, avoid scout trailers really, as you'll just be winching yourself from A to B, which is really no fun. The roof rack on this scout is more suited to keeping itself going rather than aiding other trucks that are in peril. Tank time now with the Tuz 420 Tatarin. This behemoth has the best tires in the game. It's eight wheel drive, four wheel steer, and has a mammoth 300 liter fuel tank plus extra supplies on the roof rack. If you need to go somewhere that doesn't have any form of road or track to get there, then this is what you use. The handling is great and it's pretty fast for a truck with the advanced special gearbox. The only issues though are that this monster cannot tow a trailer in the conventional sense and there is no snorkel, so be careful in water or you'll get wiped out really quickly. Oh, and did I mention that you can get this for free multiple times? Finally, the Yar 87, a 6x6 beast that can in fact tow trailers and do it well. Its big balloon style tires ensure plenty of grip and traction. This accompanied by its excellent fuel consumption levels make it a fantastic choice for exploring and rescue. All-wheel drive is on a toggle as opposed to the always on diff lock, 
but that doesn't really matter. The increase in fuel consumption is nearly negligible. A strong hauler, plus it's super affordable and at a fairly low rank, a solid pick for any playthrough of the game. Having covered the base game scouts, now we will look at the heavy duty trucks, starting with the Caterpillar CT680, which is another one of those trucks you want to love, but there are just a few niggles that take away from its practicality. The biggest drawback is that there is no raised suspension kit for it, and the rear of the chassis rides so low on the axles that it seems as if there's no suspension at all, so the ground clearance can be a really big problem. However, the cat has a beast of an engine, so it will shift like stuff off a shovel uh, once upgraded, and you'll be able to take full advantage of all-wheel drive and diff lock. Another great point is the truck's versatility, as you can equip nearly every other add-on lacking just the Vibra size unit. I would avoid using the high saddle though with this truck, especially with the super heavy trailers given the ride height issues. Next is the Chevrolet Kodiak C70, which fans of my hard mode series will know is an absolutely capable truck, even all the way off in far and more where I use this truck for light cargo and scouting. A good ride height, modest fuel tank and decent power will allow this truck to trundle through most conditions without too much fuss. This is commendable as this is one of the earliest trucks you'll pick up as it is situated in Black River and it just requires rescue. Driven properly, this truck will see you through the whole game. Back to basics now with the Fleetstar F2070A which is the third vehicle you will own. This faithful workhorse can put in the hours and nearly single-handedly see you through Michigan on its own. Versatile and strong, it will get you to where you need to go and haul along multiple units of cargo at the same time. It's a great candidate for crane and flatbed options and not too damaging on the bank balance for fuel in hard mode either. Another one of those lifelong friends you'll come back to again and again. The final heavy duty truck is the White Western Star 4964, which may be rescued from an awkward position in Smithville Dam, but is definitely worth it. Another early game powerhouse that will happily work alongside the Fleet Star, just be careful with all wheel drive though, as it will potentially drain your fuel tank faster than anticipated. This is one of those trucks that is set in forgetting high range, as it just has a knack for getting through tough terrain, just buffing progress from time to time with the all wheel drive function. Plenty to offer and pretty good looking, worth keeping hold of for sure. Taking an even quicker look at the highway trucks now, beginning with the Ford CLT 9000 and this thing exists for the ultimate SnowRunner challenge. No all wheel drive or diff lock, but a multitude of add-ons are available. A truck that seems ideal for roads of Alaska, however beware, if you equip the chain tires then do not venture into the mud. If you stick with the regular UOD2 tires, you can get pretty far in off-road conditions, though you'll be changing gear a lot. High gear is a good start for skimming over the tough ground, but once the mud deepens, you'll be wiggle steering and gear changing very frequently, but it can be done. Next is the starting truck, the GMC MH9500. This started with a hard life, most likely being abandoned shortly after acquiring some new vehicles. However, due to updates allowing more usability further into the game, it can fill pretty much any add-on you require. It has good torque, allowing the truck to traverse conditions that aren't too deep or wet. Shallow snow and mud with the right speed and driving style are very achievable. Lastly in this category, we have the International Transtar 4070A. Just like the Ford, there's no all-wheel driver diff lock availability at all, so rolling with off-road tires and having to change gear constantly to keep moving is required. One thing I forgot to mention about on the Ford, and it applies to this, is to equip the longest winch possible for those tricky situations. Given the shorter length of the truck, add-ons are slightly limited, as are their combination potentials. 265 litres will keep you going for a good while, and being a cab over design means that it'll be hard to get it wedged in dips and ditches. Now it's time for the big boy heavy trucks. The Azov 4220 Antarctic is unique in that it is one of few trucks in the game that has hydraulic articulated steering in the same nature as the Cat 745C, so they can take a little bit of getting used to. The six-wheel drive behemoth can plow through the harshest terrain with its enormous tires. Capable of utilizing a flatbed or hauling logs, it will definitely get your cargo to the destination, though be wary as its height can work against it in certain situations, so beware of advanced cambers and boulder fields. 
Next is the Azov 73210 with its infamous low riding bumper. Chassis design is essentially that of a mobile crane with 10 wheel drive and 6 wheel steer allowing for excellent handling and maneuvering in tight spaces. Multiple flatbed length options are available as well as is the ability to still hold a trailer and use a small crane which makes this truck very versatile and one of my favourites. Even more so with its active suspension upgrade allowing you to raise the height of the bumper enough to get it out of trouble. As long as you don't bury the truck into a gully at speed then you'll be just fine. The Cat 745C has had a weird life in SnowRunner, losing and gaining utility across multiple updates. One of the first two trucks to have articulated steering, this mammoth chassis would just about get you anywhere you need to as long as it isn't too icy. All wheel drive and diff lock are on a toggle but it really doesn't matter. The all wheel drive system does not consume more fuel when engaged so have it on at all times. An excellent medium log hauling truck and a brilliant refueling aid where necessary. This is a definite must have in your trucking arsenal. Just avoid water that comes up to the radiator grill. Over to the Dan 96320 now. I haven't always had the best relationship with this truck. I've always found it a bit lacking and I, and I know there are others that kind of swear by this truck. Slightly off in shape and design, I feel like its potential is limited by the position of the gearbox as this truck could have had a triple slot bed. Able to run pretty much any add-on, I use this truck as a crane vehicle in my hard mode series. All wheel drive and diff lock are always on and it has the advanced special gearbox which is great coupled with unique independent suspension for each wheel maximizing your contact with the ground. The Derry Longhorn 3194 used to be fairly useless but after a few updates it has renewed life enabling the dead axle to be lifted and the addition of diff lock always on and the all wheel drive was switched to always on too. Built as a specialist for low and high saddle loads this truck has a lot of power and makes for a great low saddle hauler that you can get for free in Alaska too. One of the largest fuel tanks in the game at 370 litres gives you a lot of distance you can cover without needing to refuel. Just be cautious of the truck's not so amazing turning radius. The larger Derry Longhorn 4520 comes from the same design and function as the DL3194 being built as a heavy hauler but with some improvements over the original design. This is now an 8x8 truck, though the all-wheel drive and diff lock are on a toggle which means you will consume more fuel, but this truck is able to hold logs as well as low and high saddles. The single biggest fuel tank in the game at 400 litres should enable long distance hauling easily. Front and rear steer improves the turning radius tenfold to help you navigate those tricky woodland tracks while towing a trailer. A weakness though is that this truck just seems to lack power. Now onto the larger of the two Kolob trucks. The Kolob 74760 is an absolute unit with its massive 8x8 twin steering chassis, huge tyres and train like appearance making this one formidable truck. Only able to run a high saddle it is dedicated to that sole role, getting those massive tyres wherever they need you to go. All wheel drive and diff lock always on means you can just high gear this thing at a fair rate enabling it to smash through the majority of conditions without breaking a sweat. However the ride height can cause a problem so make sure you grab its active suspension upgrade where you can. A 380 litre fuel tank and a fairly decent consumption rate means you won't need to be following this truck with a tanker. The nosy Kolob 74941 is at this point a slight oddity when it comes to massive trucks as it requires a fair amount of micromanagement to keep fuel consumption limited but also at traversing the elements. It has the same add-ons as its bigger cousin the 74760 and was firmly the favourite over its train like counterpart due to having a higher ride height. However, all wheel drive toggle means you'll be consuming a lot more fuel and you will be varying your speeds. Still a trusty workhorse but replaced by the bigger Kolob or the mighty Zix 605R coming later. The Pacific P12, another Marmite truck, somewhat of an oddity on release of the game as there was no logging contracts and the Pacific company are most renowned for that sort of thing. Anyways, big Canadian power vibes and a 350 litre fuel tank enable this heavy hitter to get haulage done. 
All-wheel drive on a toggle means your fuel consumption will vary when required, but it should prove a worthy ally and can even fit the new tires to the old girl. Not particularly quick, if that's what you're looking for, but it will keep you going on these windy switchback tracks and roads. Now onto the mighty P16, the early game beast, and if you Google this truck, you will see why. The IRL king of logging has its own unique set of OHD tires in the game, with one of the best dirt and mud ratings given to any set of tires, giving it a huge advantage in poor conditions. Capable of tasks outside of logging also, this was the original heavy hauler for those that stayed in Michigan to begin with. An Omega level horn and diff lock always on will help you get pretty much anywhere, except for in the later DLC maps which can be a bit more unforgiving. This is down to the lack of all wheel drive which really kills the truck's performance on hills. I used this truck for one long log hauling contract in phase 3 and was just purely frustrated as the truck couldn't make turns or climb slopes. One worth keeping though to aid in recovery missions. Likely obtained at a similar stage to the P16, especially if you follow my starter guide, the Western Star 6900 Twin Steer was a truck that struck all players with awe when we first saw it in Island Lake. A monstrously long four cargo slot hauler with enormous tires and an enormous thirst to match it. Only capable of hauling cargo on its flatbed, this 360 litre monster will get you to your destination in record time as it's surprisingly one of the fastest trucks in the game. Diffloc comes on a toggle, but unfortunately you'll have to go all the way into a Mandra for that all-important all-wheel drive upgrade, which is very naughty. That's right, you have to buy DLC to improve and upgrade this truck. And also it can tip over from time to time, so do be careful. Last but not least of the vanilla vehicles, the off-road trucks category. The speedy ANK Mark 38 is obtained for free in Alaska and is one of the fastest vehicles in the game. With balloon tires and a high range box, there are a few trucks that can match the torque and mud skipping prowess of the ANK Mark 38. However, there are several drawbacks. The main two being fuel consumption and stability. The high speed also makes you susceptible to damage more than other trucks, so that suspension will be gone in no time at all. Unfortunately, it can only be outfitted with a stock sideboard bed, though you can tow a trailer too. Definitely useful in it, but maybe shouldn't be relied upon in the long term. The mill spec as of 5319, with its piece livery, is up next, and I would enjoy this truck. It's powerful and fast and can carry an array of add-ons, but unfortunately it has a leaky fuel tank that only seems to be able to hold 200 litres of fuel at any given time which for a big 8x8 truck, I feel, is absurd. To me, it makes no sense. Even in the vehicle description, it mentions needing supply lines to run this truck, and I won't disagree that this truck is very capable with all-wheel drive and diff lock always on and having power for days, but driving it feels like you're on a time attack to get where you're going before the fuel runs out. One for short journeys and not for exploration. Now for some controversy. The Azov 64131, for me, is the best vanilla truck in SnowRunner. There, I said it. Excellent fuel economy, huge power, practically a full fleet of add-ons, great for low and high saddle loads, 8x8 powerhouse that is as steady as a rock and useful in every situation and available at level 2. It may be one of the slowest trucks, but who really cares? SnowRunner isn't a racing game. There are some time attack contests, but this truck isn't what you would use that for. There's plenty of other options. Where it does fall down, though, is if you have the loading crane equipped, then you can't tow a trailer when you've got the flatbed. Otherwise, you can normally. There is a lot of weight behind this truck, making it good for flipping over other trucks that have taken corners too quickly or have had a whoopsie-daisy. Anyways, moving on. The Freightliner 114SD is a truck that flies so under the radar for most people. And I'll be honest, I've barely used it myself. It's, uh, it's part of a group of trucks that are mostly the same in performance and characteristics. A diluted group of off-road class vehicles. You can equip most add-ons onto this truck and it has a solid 300 litre fuel tank. Though you will just burn through it all when the all-wheel drive is on, thanks to it being a toggle. Diff lock is also on a toggle, so you'll have to micro through terrain with varying conditions. 
It is fairly nice to drive, and its center mass seems fairly low. There's no harm in trying it out, but you aren't really missing much if you don't. It's as vanilla as it gets. The Freightliner M916A1 is a truck I really should use more. On initial release, its steering was a mess, so it was left to the wayside. For a tractor-trailer combo, it's very small compared to its regular North American cousins, being able to use the low and high saddle and a loading crane, though you cannot use a saddle trailer with the loading crane. It's got a fair punch of power and a good ride height to help with muddy conditions. It does visually have a hose on the back, but this is just for show. Diffloc is always on to help with those high gear shenanigans through various terrains with all-wheel drive on a toggle for a little boost. Definitely want to try for Alaska or Belazersk due to the high volume of roads, as it is quick and it does tow well. The International Paystar 5070 is another early game gem if you have the money, a jack-of-all-trades North American truck that can actually run mud tires. Just be careful though of its high centre of mass or turning at speed will have you rolling over in no time. Capable of towing a trailer as well as running a flatbed in a crane, you'll be completing tasks and contracts left and right with this setup. Only minor downside really is the 240 litre fuel tank which feels like it's a bit lacking. And using all wheel drive system can drain you quickly if you're not paying attention in off-road conditions. As mentioned, this can be a solid ally across at least the vanilla game maps of Michigan, Alaska and Tamir. Here is another early game truck for some easy cash, the Royal BM-17. With a certain setup, this thing is psychotic on toast. Huge ground clearance, mad speed, but crazy soft suspension means you'll be flying all over the place with this truck as you'll see as I drive around like an absolute hooligan. No diff lock and all-wheel drive is on a toggle here, which I guess is kind of unique. Uh, it can fill a good variety of roles. For instance, I used this to haul a tanker trailer way back in the Amor Hard campaign. But you can also run it with a crane and a flatbed for those cargo recovery missions. It can see a lot of use early on, but maybe waning in the late game. The Tiny Step 310E is one of the few Eurasian trucks that cannot equip mud tires, which is fairly odd. Rescued from Tamir, this little roamer you can either love or forget, especially against the backdrop of all the other Eurasian trucks in the game. All-wheel drive and diff lock are on a toggle, and it has a fairly small fuel tank of just 220 litres, but it can, with work, get through rough terrain. This kind of truck for me is definitely more of a support role. Time for some more controversy. The Tega 6436, or Tega King, is a six-wheel drive beast that can off-road with the best of them. Primarily used by me for seismic vibrator module or as a recovery truck, a surprisingly thirsty truck, the fuel consumption can be very erratic, as you can see here, and I won't deny its mud traversal ability is solid but not infallible. Caught off guard, you'll have dug down into the mud in no time, leaving yourself with the task of crawling out of the mud like everybody else. The sleeper cab design also denies the truck's ability to run a crane and flatbed combo, meaning that if you want to haul cargo and use a crane, then you've got to go with the low saddle trailer route. Due to its speed capabilities though, do be careful on roads where there are sticks and rocks or you can say goodbye to your wheels and suspension. Onto the Voron Trio, the Voron AE4380 gets the hot rod livery and a lot of speed trolling through mud. Unable to utilize the fabled flatbed crane and trailer combo, it does boast all-wheel drive and diff lock always on for maximum performance regardless of conditions. An okay sized 250 litre fuel tank may need supporting for longer journeys, but it's fairly low center of mass to keep it out of trouble generally speaking. Definitely one of those jack of all trades trucks. The Voron D 53233 is up next with its larger fuel tank and its ability to use a crane, flatbed and trailer. It has a decent speed and power for getting through the mud, and you can pick up this truck early in the game from level 2, just the same as the Azov 64131, though obviously you won't have the mud tires until later on unless you're playing New Game Plus and starting beyond level 13. A well-rounded truck that should definitely be considered. You could easily run a fleet of these for the memes or just for the practicality of it. The Voron D matches the AE also in that it has all-wheel drive and diff lock always on. The final part of the Triforce is the Voron Grad. This one breaks the Voron mold with all-wheel drive and diff lock now on a toggle but a much larger fuel tank at 330 litres. 
It cannot run the crane flatbed trailer combo, but it does have very good ground clearance and a decent fuel economy despite the all-wheel drive toggle. Personally, I think it's the best looking of the three and it can get around with good speed with a high speed gearbox. It has a solid chassis weight too, so when using a crane, you won't be tipping over much unless you're on uneven ground or full extension, which everybody should already know is a bad idea. Ending the vanilla coverage with the Zix 5368, I have one use for this truck and it still kind of struggles, the magnetic detector module. This is because the module often takes up the main component area on the majority of trucks, but I never use this truck so it gets a promotion. It's essentially a big scout. It's worse than the Tuz Acteon, but it can have the metal detector and a one cargo flatbed if you're really feeling brave and you can still tow a trailer. If you're feeling ultra brave, equip the log loader crane. That will really test your nerves. It has a 190 liter fuel tank, which for anything outside of Scouts is tiny. Right, so after that mammoth mega review, if you've made it this far, then oh my my, thank you very much for watching. If you have found this video useful, then please let me know down below. And if you could give the video a like and a comment as it really helps the channel out and have a great day.